I'm Pat Dugat. In this screencast, we're going to dive deeper into arithmetic sequences and series. So let's talk about finding the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. And the nth term can be any term you want from the first to the last or anything in between. Um, so we can actually find that nth term using this formula. The nth term is equal to the first term plus a certain number of differences. The, you remember D is the common difference. How many differences depends on how far forward you want to go in the sequence. And it's always going to be N minus 1 differences. We start with the first term and then we add a certain number of differences. That number is N minus 1. So let's look at using that formula in an example. We want to find the 50th term of the sequence 3, 3, 10, 17, 24. We know we've got to find that common difference. So we're going to use that formula. a sub n equals the first term, a sub 1, plus n minus 1 differences. So we got to find that common difference d. Well, 10 minus 3 is 7. 17 minus 10 is also 7. Therefore, to find a sub 50, the fastest way is to use this formula. It's a sub 1 which is 3, plus 50 minus 1 differences of 7. So a sub 50 is 3 plus 49 times 7. And that's going to give us 346. Now, you could actually manually do this numerically. Start with 3 and keep adding 7 49 times until you got to 346. But using the formula is a faster way, the analytical solution. And we can use that formula to also write functional equations for arithmetic sequences. So if we wanted to write an equation for the nth term of the arithmetic sequence that was negative 8, negative 6, negative 4, and so on, we need some information. So we can use our formula, a sub n, any, any uh, point in the sequence can be found by taking a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times the common difference d. So we've got to find the common difference d. Well, we take any two terms in the arithmetic sequence and subtract them from each other. So we get negative 6 minus negative 8, and that becomes negative 6 plus 8, positive 2. So the common difference is plus 2. So any term in the sequence is equal to the first term. And by the way, the first term, a sub 1, is negative 8. It's the first one listed. So it's negative 8 plus n minus 1 times the common difference of d. So we can actually use this to create a rule to find any term. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and distribute that 2. So we get negative 8 plus 2 times n minus 2. Now let's combine our like terms. And so a sub n equals negative 8 minus 2, which is negative 10. And let's put the 2 in, fr and in front. We always like to put that variable term first and have this in descending order of powers. So a sub n is equal to 2n minus 10. We can use it to find any term in this sequence. If we want to find the 100th term, we put in a 100 for n. Notice that is a linear function with a slope of 2. Let's use that same idea to write an equation for any term in an arithmetic sequence where we just know one term in the sequence and we know the common difference. So if we know a sub 6 is negative, a sub 6 equals 11, and we know the common difference is negative 11, we're going to use that formula again. a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times the common difference d. Well, we know the common difference is negative 11. So the thing we really have to find out is we have to go backwards and figure out what a sub 1 is. And the way we're going to do that is by using the information we have. If we know that a sub 6 equals 11, a sub 6, which is 11, has to equal a sub 1 plus 11 minus 1 times negative 11. Because we could use this formula to calculate the sixth term as well. So if we set 11 equal to a1, a sub 1 plus 11 minus 1 times negative 11 and solve that, we're going to find a1. And so 11 minus 1 is 10. Multiply that by negative 11. We get 11, a lot of 11s here. 11 equals a, a sub 1 minus 110. Add 110 to both sides. 
and so we're going to get that a sub 1 is equal to 121. So the first term in the, in the sequence is 121. Now that we know that, we can plug it back into the original formula. So a sub n equals 121, which is the first term, plus n minus 1 times minus 11. Now let's go ahead and distribute that negative 11 and clean it up. And so we're going to get a sub n equals 121 minus 11n plus 11. Combine our like terms. And so this sequence is defined as negative 11n plus 132, which we can now use to solve and find any term in this sequence. Another thing we can do with this formula is to find unknown terms. The arithmetic means in uh, an arithmetic sequence are the unknown terms between two numbers. So if we know that 21 is the first term, or these unknown terms are a sub 2, a sub 3, and a sub 4, and we know a sub 5. So we can use again that same formula, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d to find the common difference d. What's really missing here is d. So we also know that a sub 5 is equal to 45. And that's equal to a sub 1, which is 21, plus n minus 1 times d. And we also know that for a sub 5, n is equal to 5. Substituting all these in here, we can actually find the value of d. So 45 equals 21 plus 4d. Subtract the 21. We get uh, 24 equals 4d. Divide by 4. Therefore, d in this sequence equals 6. 24 divided by 4. And so if d is equal to 6, we can very quickly add 6 to a1 to get the unknown terms. So the unknown terms become 21 plus 6, 27. And then add another 6, a sub 3 is 33. And then add another 6, a sub 4 is 39. So those are our unknown terms, which wind up being what are called the arithmetic means. So now we're going to focus on being able to find the sum of the terms, or at least the partial sum of terms in an arithmetic ser series. And that formula for that, the sum of n terms in a arithmetic series or sequence, is equal to n divided by 2 times the sum of a1, the first term, plus a sub n, the nth term. Let's put that into practice. Suppose we want to find the sum of the sequence uh, that includes 8, 12, 16, dot, 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 all the way to 80. So we're going to add, want to add those up. Well, the first thing we have to do is be able to find the n. How many terms are there here? We really don't know. So we're going to use that formula from before that a sub n is equal to a1 plus uh, n minus 1 times that common difference d. Now we can see pretty quickly by subtraction that the common difference is 4. So d is 4. Our first term, a sub 1, is 8. Our last term is 80. We don't know what n is, but 80 equals 8 plus n minus 1 times 4. So let's subtract 8. And we get 72 equals 4 times n minus 1. We can divide by 4. Uh, 72 divided by 4 is 18. 18 equals n minus 1, so add 1. Now we know that 80, this is the 19th term. So 80 is a sub 19. Now we can use that. Once we know n, we can put it into that partial sum formula. s sub n equals n over 2 times the first term plus the last term. Okay, so in this case, s sub the sum of the first 19 terms is equal to 19 divided by 2 times the first term, 8, plus the last term, 80. So the sum of those first 19 terms is equal to 19 over 2 times 88. Okay, and we do that on our calculator. We get 836. The last thing we're going to do is introduce what's called sigma notation. Sigma from the Greek symbol, the large sigma, capital sigma, looks like this. Uh, it stands for sum or summation. You'll see this as you advance further in mathematics as well. So um, 
sequences and series can be written in what's called sigma notation. Um, the number at the bottom of the sigma is the first value of the term, the first, or the first number of the term. This is called the index in the sum. And then the last value is on top. So um, this is going to sum all the terms from the first term to the nth term. And then to the right of the sigma symbol is the actual function, the formula for the terms in the series. So for example, if we have this right here, what this means is the sum of the terms from 1 to 12 of the series 4k plus 2. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that index number in 4k. So the first term, the fir term 1, would be 4 times 1 plus 2, or in other words, uh, 6. The second term, we'd now have make k, t k equal to 2. So it's 4 times 2 plus 2, 8 plus 2, 10. And then we would substitute all the way all the numbers up to um, 12 in for this. So that's just another way of writing series. So let's evaluate the sum of the terms from 3 to 10 of 2k plus 1. So that's going to equal to, the first thing we're going to do is set a k equal to 3. So we have 2 times 3 plus 1. And then we're going to add that to k equals 4, 2 times 4 plus 1, all the way up to 2 times 10 plus 1. Okay, now we could do that manually that way, but a faster way is to use our sum formula. So we know that S sub n is equal to n over 2 times the first term plus the last term. Okay, and so we know n in this case is equal to 8. Uh, if we count the numbers from 3 to 10, there are actually 8 of them. So n is equal to 8. So we get 8 divided by 2 times the first term, which is 2 times 3 plus 1, um, 7, plus the last term, this is the 10th term, where we have 2 times 10 plus 1, which is 21. So the sum of this, uh, this series is 8 divided by 2, or 4, times 28. Okay, and that's going to give us 112. So in this lesson, we've gone into arithmetic sequences and series, looking at being able to find individual terms in it, and also being able to find partial sums of the series.